Does someone who commits suicide go to hell? And I just want to say that I want to attempt to address this question as compassionately as I possibly can, because I know that there are those that are listening to me today uh, that you've had a loved one that has committed suicide, and if that's you, my heart breaks for you. There's others of you that you've actually contemplated taking your own life. Unfortunately for me as a pastor, in the 25 years that I've been serving full-time, I've, I've actually led many funerals that were as a result of suicide. And I'm going to tell you that every single one of them are more gut-wrenching than you could possibly ever even imagine. And so when I answer this question today, I'm not just flippantly, casually answering this. This is actually something that has deeply affected my life. I remember one of the very f- first ones was, I'd, I'd just started in youth ministry, and I had a teenager. His name was Ricky. Man, Ricky was, I mean, he was always smiling. The, he, he always had such an incredible attitude. He had all this kind of this hair, almost even an afro kind of like. The girls loved to mess with it. And I'll never forget where I was. I, when I got the call about Ricky. And for those of you that have been on the receiving end of that call, maybe there was some authority that called you, a family member, a friend, to tell you about that loved one of yours. I'm just going to tell you today that my heart breaks for you. Last year in America, over 50,000 people committed suicide. The highest number on ever record. The most ever. It's one of the number one killers of kids 15 to 24. In fact, if you know somebody that is contemplating ending their life, I would highly recommend that you give them this number and ask them to call this. Because there are people that are there that will walk alongside them and work to help give them solutions They they will help give them solutions to what they think is the end of their life. They will help talk them out of a wrong solution to some very real feelings. But I know that you asked the question today, not so that you could get a phone number, but you wanted to find out, hey, what does God's word have to say on this? And what I want to do is I actually want to share with you some thoughts and things that I heard when I was growing up, and the chances are pretty strong that you've heard a lot of these same things. You know, I heard growing up that if you commit suicide, you're committing murder. And if you commit murder, they will give you this verse out of 1 John that says, anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. I've also heard people say, well, if you commit suicide, that's the sin that you cannot confess and repent of. And so because of that, you're going to wind up in, you're going to wind up in hell. Well, how much of a bummer would that be for you to be involved in a freak car accident? And while the accident is happening, you let out a cuss word. You don't have time to repent. You die. You go directly to hell. Come on, everybody. Salvation does not work like that. Jesus said there's only one sin that will not be forgiven, and that is called blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And in my opinion, suicide is not that sin. So what does the Bible have to say about this? Well, a couple of things I need you to know. Two things. Number one, many biblical characters got discouraged and prayed to die. I mean, I think you'd be shocked if you actually went on an exploration to study this. I mean, I think about Moses. The guy saw more of a demonstration of the power of God than virtually any other person that's ever walked this planet. And yet he got so discouraged, so depressed, he cried out to God and said, God, end my life. In fact, this is what he said here in Numbers. He said, God, if this is how you're going to treat me, (laughs) then take my life. Go ahead and just kill me. The great prophet Jonah said, now, Lord, take my life, for it's better for me to be dead than to live. I mean, you think about Elijah. 
God's man of faith and power. He said this, man, he sat down underneath a broom brush and prayed that he might die. And notice what he said. I've had enough. I've had enough. And some of you are here today and you're saying the exact same thing to God. Like, God, I can't take any more of this. I can't take one more disappointment. I can't take one more setback. I can't keep doing this. God, where are you at? And I need you to know today that it's not accidental that you're here in this service. Because just like God spoke and ministered and answered Elijah's prayer, God is going to move on your behalf. And it will probably be different than what you're expecting, but God's not forgotten you. Here's the second thing that you would need to know today, and that's this. There's actually people in the Bible who committed suicide that went to heaven while others went to hell. So, for example, in Hebrews chapter 11, you'll read all about Samson, and it makes it very clear that Samson is in heaven today, even though he ended his own life, admittedly, while taking out a bunch of the enemy. And on the other hand, you'll read about others that committed suicide, like King Saul and Judas and others. That scripture makes it very clear that they're actually in hell. To which you're asking the question today. All right, Chris. What do you think? Because I know that you want to know what I'm thinking on all this. And I would tell you something that I think is maybe going to shock you. And, And that is this, that suicide is a topic that the Bible is somewhat silent about. And not having certainty about your eternity, that's scary to me. It's almost as if God wants to deal with each person on a case by case basis individually. I believe that that somebody can be underneath the grace of God, commit suicide, and still go to heaven. But please listen to me. I am not saying that it's okay because it's not okay. So even though the Christian who commits suicide, they get to escape all of their problems, they leave behind them a slew of all kinds of unanswered questions and problems and sadness and sorrow for all of their loved ones. In fact, I'll say it like this. Suicide is a permanent, irreversible attempt to solve a temporary problem. What I can promise you is that your emotions, as they have come crashing in like waves, I can promise you that there's coming a day that they will also recede. Everybody, look in my eyes. You don't have to die to end your pain. Amen, everybody? And I'm not saying that your pain isn't real. And I'm not, I want to acknowledge the pain. I want to give validity to the pain. But I also want to come alongside you and encourage you with what Jesus said in John 10.10. 10. He said this. He said that the thief, that's Satan, that's your spiritual enemy. He's after everything that matters to the heart of God. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And I'm telling you today, that's what suicide produces. But Jesus promises that I, and he says, I have come that they might have life and life to the full. Hey, everybody, there's always hope. And if you've been contemplating considering taking your own life, you need to hear the words of this pastor today, that in Christ, there is always help. In Christ, there is always forgiveness. In Christ, there's always a bright future. In Christ, there is always love. And the people of God, come on, say amen. 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 So be it. 